Hello and welcome to my review of uh, Deuce X. Uh, this is a video game that came out in the year, I think, 2000 or 1999, around that time. And, um, well, all I'm going to say is that this game, even when it, well, I think when it first came out, it was, well, it, it's not that it was, it wasn't, it, no one said it was a bad game, but it's just, it's was well underrated for the most part and there are a number of reasons why but it's surprising that it was underrated but like one of its big strengths uh, was the fact that it well did s did things that was that were very very different um, it took I felt like it took elements from games such as Duke Nukem and other games like that, and like, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, um, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, personally, I think it was actually more based on a game, another game called System Shock 2, which was sort of similar to this kind of game, but not exactly. But like, um, basically, it did something. It did a lot of different things because it was a first person shooter in kind of a role playing combination. And, like, for example, it did things like um, it added choices to how you could do things or what, or you could, you could uh, be good in certain things, but you couldn't be good in everything unless you cheated, of course. And there was also, like, dialogue options. You could also buy things from stores. It was just very, yeah, very immersive, a very immersive game, and it was, well, um, how can I put this, um, underrated, because I don't know why, but it was just underrated. Maybe I can think of a few reasons, but I'll talk about those in a few minutes, but, um, like I was saying, um, this game was very immersive, and, um, it was very very difficult to play the same way twice. I mean, you could do things totally differently one time and another time you could do things another way. There were uh, quite a few scripted events and, you know, like there were a few moments where you didn't really have much of a choice, but a lot of times you did have a choice. You could and your actions, well, they um had consequences, for the most part. I mean, theoretically, you could go around killing everyone, and uh, you wouldn't get game over, but, I mean, you could kill anyone you wanted, and you wouldn't get game over for killing them. Like, I mean, you'd be, like, one, you'd probably wonder what the heck to do, but after you killed everyone, but you wouldn't get game over, like I said. But, like, there were s a few people you couldn't kill, though. Some people were invincible for some reason. O unless there were certain moments during the game where, um, um, you could kill people. But, like, for the most part, yeah, you can't really, like, and there are certain people you can't kill. And, anyways, um, it's a long game as well, and like I said, people will react to you if you do certain things. Like, if you take out a gun in a bar, they will act afraid of you. <laughs> or if you, let's say, do. But, like, I mean, there were a few things that were, well, kind of strange. Like, for example, you could pretty much hack a computer in front of the in front of the people. They'd yell at you and lecture you and be like, "What the hell are you doing?" But, like you, but like you could get away with it as long as and if you if you didn't get caught though, they wouldn't really care that much. Um, what else? The voice acting though was one thing that was well eh you see especially JC Denden, the guy you play as. He sounds like well 
let's put it this way. He sounds really, really emotionless. Now, they do say that it's because he's a mechanoid or something like that, an augmented person, and um, that he just doesn't know how to show emotion. Uh, yeah, which is kind of strange, but okay, it's understandable, but like, there's a few moments where I felt like, hey, he was actually showing emotion. Because, like, for example, there's this one part where these two girls are, like, hitting on him, and he still manages to sound like he's a robot, like, monotone kind of guy. But, anyways, um... What else happens? Um... Like I said, um, it's a long game. The story is kind of confusing at times. Um... That's an that's something that, that's something that's meh because like, I mean, y you're not given all the information right away. You're not given much of a ba backstory. You're just plopped right into the middle of something, and you basically have to f to guess to g to um. Basically, you're told pretty much everything through dialogue for the most part. But like, even then, it's like confusing dialogue about politics or history or stuff you don't know about or stuff that happened or whatever you may or may not understand a lot of the dialogue well some of the dialogue at least I mean there's really simple dialogue too but like uh, other times the dialogue can get confusing and um yeah yes I and like I said it also you had the option of about three endings at the end which was interesting but like I mean your actions didn't really me I mean your actions didn't really show what would happen at the end like most of your actions were relevant to the to what ending you chose because basically it was only what you did at the last let's say f last part of the game that chose what ending you chose. However, I mean, it's interesting that the story made it so that you had, that you were given f these options by like three different people. Um, and none of these people are people you thought you'd be working with. <laughs> and Which is interesting because, like I said, you actually did not think you'd be working with these people when you first started the game. Um, like I said, there's also, like I said, s like I said, some of the stuff you have to go through, you can't really make a choice, and like I said, if you want to do certain things, you can't do them, and you can't like branch out into different um, paths. For the most part, you're stuck on one path, but I mean, there's optional quests which you don't do or don't have to do if you do them you get rewards such as um experience which is nice or even cash which is nice again but um like i said for the most part um you can theoretically also you can theoretically go around this game without killing anyone theoretically but it's not a very practical option and besides, make putting them unconscious is mm, kind of the same as uh, just killing them. I mean, there's not really much difference in killing someone or um, making them putting them unconscious, like using a baton or the stun rod or a tranquilizer. Like I said, I personally making them unconscious or killing them. It kind of was the same thing to me. Um, yeah. Like I said, s and some people you just didn't have a choice. Like, for example, Men in Black. I'm serious, there are Men in Black in this game. And Women in Black. Yeah, and they explode at the end. If you kill them. Yeah, some people do explode at the end. Which, yeah. But anyways, uh, that's about all I'm gonna say about this game. Um... There's not much more to say, and so, see ya, bye.